This is Anne Zajac, and let's talk now about using Fomacha. Fomacha is a targeted selective deworming program based on assessment of anemia caused by Homonchus contortus, the barber pole worm. Anemia is a reduction in the number or volume of red blood cells in blood to below normal levels. This system was developed in South Africa and then brought to the US by the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control. So what's targeted selective deworming? Well, it's when we deworm animals uh, in a group uh, based on a, a, a target. Uh, it will increase refugia by helping and help slow down the development of resistant worm populations. So we're targeting a specific group of animals. We're not deworming all of the animals at one time. With Fomacha, the targeted group is animals with anemia caused by Homonchus contortus. Now this uh, system, Fomacha, is only going to work where Homonchus contortus is the predominant, predominant gastrointestinal nematode. Now, luckily, that's most of the United States. And this system of uh, detecting anemia indirectly measures parasite numbers and infection severity, and therefore the need for treatment. We identify anemia with the use of a card. And that uh, card has five uh, color categories that we can match to the conjunctival mucous membranes of the eye, the sheep or goat, or a llama or alpaca. And then we classify the, uh, that color uh, into one of these categories that describes whether or not the animal is anemic. And on the left hand end, you see uh, bright red, which is not anemic. On the right hand end, a severely anemic animal. Now, the color that we're uh, uh, correlating to the uh, mucous membrane color has been uh, studied uh, extensively, and it's been validated that the colors on the card actually are directly linked to the percentage of the red blood cells in the blood. So we know that if an animal uh, scores a one, then that means it is very, very, very likely to have a percentage of red blood cells of greater than or equal to 28%, which is considered normal. And you can see then that these colors match up to what you should do in terms of deworming. If the animal scores a one or two, you don't treat. If it scores a three, maybe you treat. If it scores a four or a five, that animal definitely needs to be treated because it has a high level of anemia. Now, I mentioned that category three uh, may or may not need to be treated. It depends partly on your management program and situation. So you may choose to deworm. Often you'll hear it recommended that lambs and kids that score a three should be deworm. Uh, should be dewormed. Many people might choose to uh, deworm pregnant or lactating animals that score a three, especially if they're first timers. Animals in poor body condition, uh, it may be a good idea to go ahead and deworm the three. And generally, we say if you're concerned about an animal's general health and well being, uh, you may choose to go ahead and deworm those animals that score a three. You always want to look at the whole animal when you're making decisions. So when and how often would you score? Well, during worm season, when conditions are really good for transmission, that means it's warm, there's moisture out there, adequate for worm development and survival, we're going to score every two weeks. When transmission slows, that interval can be increased so much. So um, when it's cooler or colder weather in spring and fall, you may be able to increase that interval. Uh, when it's winter time uh, with freezing weather, you probably don't need to score at all. Some of this is going to be based on your experience of local conditions. And so you develop a feel for how often you need to score. But the critical thing is that during worm season, 
when those parasites are really doing well, you need to score every two weeks. We have found that right around the time of lambing and kidding, you get more worms coming out of uh, arrested development uh, because of relaxed immunity. It's a good idea to score at that time as well. Now, anemia can sneak up on you in, in young animals, uh, especially. So another advantage to Famicha is that if you're checking frequently, you shouldn't lose animals. You shouldn't be surprised uh, by an animal that all of a sudden uh, is dead when it had looked fine uh, a week or so ago. But I wanna be clear that using the card now and then isn't the same as using our Famicha system because vulnerable animals can change category, can change their Famicha category dramatically over a two week period. And that's why you have to stick to that two week check in the heart of transmission season. So we're gonna keep you uh, looking at your animals uh, with Famicha on a more frequent basis. And so the advantage here too is that you're more likely to pick up other problems earlier. Now you're gonna see a video that demonstrates the, demonstrates the actual technique, but here's a quick introduction. We wanna score animals in direct natural light. That means not in the barn except where light really directly enters uh, uh, a building. You don't wanna score them under an overhang or in the shade. And you don't wanna shade the eye with your body. Now you don't have to have a bright sunny day. You can score them too on a cloudy day, but don't go under the shade of a lot of trees. You wanna score the bed of mucous membranes that's below the eye. You don't want to score the inside of the eyelid, which may in fact appear paler than the actual bed of, of membranes. And so we can divide our technique for scoring into four stages or four uh, little mnemonic uh, words here to help you remember. The first is cover the eye by rolling the upper eyelid down over the eyelid. Then you wanna push down on the eyeball until the eyelashes kind of curl up and touch your thumbnail. Now, don't worry, you're not hurting them. It seems like you might be hurting them, but you're not. It feels a little odd, but you're not hurting them. And then you pull down on the lower eyelid. And what happens is that bed of mucous membranes pops up into view. And you can see it here in this animal that we've got. You can't even see the eye because you've rolled the eyelid down over the eye, and now you've exposed that nice pink bed of membranes. And then you match the color of the pinkest portion of the mucous membranes to the card. So here you can see what we wanna do. We wanna score that bed of mucous membranes here. What we don't wanna do is just look at the rim of the eyelid. Now you wanna use the card each time. Some people think, well, I'll remember what those colors look like, but in fact, you don't, you tend to drift. So you wanna have the card right there each time. You wanna score both eyes. They can be different. You may get a two on one side, a three on the other side. And you always use the highest number, the most anemic number, so that you don't mistreating an animal that might need it. No half scores. You have to use whole numbers to score both eyes. You want to be quick. If you stand there with the eye held open, hemming and hawing and not, not sure what number you want to call it, those uh, membranes will get pinker. So you just do it quickly, make, uh, give your, your best impression and, and be done and go to the next eye. You want to store the, core, the card in a dark place when it's not in use. Uh, what many people like to do is get two cards. One always stays in a desk drawer or a cupboard. And then you can compare the one that's in use with that one that never gets used and see if it's starting to fade. Because over time, these colors do fade. So you gotta be sure that you've got a, a fully unfaded card in use. And when it starts to fade, then you want to replace the card. So here's a couple situations you might wonder about. What if I see different shades of pink in the membranes? And sometimes you do see 
patches of slightly different colors in that bed of mucous membranes. You score the pinkest part. Don't worry uh, about the paler part, score the pinkest part. Sometimes you might see a fleshy white membrane called the nictitating membrane or third eyelid that sits at the inner corner of the eye and it can pop up um, and it looks like you're doing something horrible to the eye. You're not, it's just a normal membrane that's there. Just reposition your fingers so that it goes down again because you don't want to score that nictitating membrane because it tends to be very pale. What if more than 10% of a herd or flock scores a four or five? Well, that suggests that you might be having a, a significant problem that's gonna to continue to develop. So in that case, you should score the threes, even if, or treat the threes, deworm the threes, even if you normally wouldn't do. And you also want to recheck in a week instead of two weeks, and then also change pasture if at all possible. What if you have lots of animals? Well, some people say, I have hundreds of animals. I don't wanna use this system. I, I can't be looking at every animal individually. But in fact, it's very helpful to use sentinel animals. And those would be your most vulnerable animals. So you could, for example, uh, take lambs and kids, figuring that they're your most vulnerable animal and score them. Or you could say, I'm going to take the animals, I'll collect up those animals that come up last for feed, because they're the most likely to be anemic. They're weaker, so they come up last. I'll check those animals in a group. If they're okay, I probably don't need to check anybody else. If the lambs and kids are okay, I probably don't need to check anybody else. So don't immediately dismiss Svamacha as unusable. Just you know, think about ways to be creative with it. What if I score an animal a four or a five and then treat it and turn it back out again? When should it be normal? Well, even when you use an effective treatment, if you're putting animals right back out on the same pasture again, they're going to get reinfected immediately. And the degree of reinfection is going to impact the length of time it takes them uh, to replace the red blood cells they've lost to the worms. So I can't tell you how long it will take for them to be normal again. Uh, what would be preferable would be to move severely anemic animals off pasture altogether, put them in the barn, put them in a dry lot, give them really nice uh, food to eat, or to move them to a pasture with fewer or no worms at all. What if I have a pregnant doe that looks thin but scores a three, and I don't usually treat animals that score a three? Well, if you're in doubt, it's okay to deworm. Uh, you want to make basic deworming decisions with Famacha, but always consider the whole animal. For example, there have been a number of people that have recommended a five-point check system to, to give you an organized way to check the whole animal. And here's just an example of uh, one from Susan Sheenian uh, of uh, Maryland Cooperative Extension. Uh, where you check the eye for anemia, you check the back to look for uh, poor condition that might that would indicate poor nutrition, check the tail to look for signs of diarrhea, the hair coat that could give you uh, evidence of poor nutrition and lice, uh, jaw for bottle jaw, and then uh, some would add in the nose to check for nasal discharge as well but you're considering always the whole animal. It's not just Fomacha. Now, what if I have a lamb, a lamb or kid that needs frequent deworming after weaning when others of the same age don't require much deworming? Well, in that case, do not keep that animal. Do not sell it to anybody who would breed it. And if you decide you wanna keep the animal, don't breed it. Don't take that animal that is much more susceptible to parasites than the others and keep its genes in the breeding pool. And you always wanna keep good records. Um, there's uh, 
template for recording FAMICA information on a herd or flock basis that's included with the FAMICA card in that packet. But there's uh, other record keeping forms you can use on the URI website. And it's really, really a good idea to keep, idea to keep individual records on animals' uh, uh, FAMICA scores as well as other health information. So just a disclaimer, FAMICA is only applicable where homonchus is the main worm causing disease, but as we said, that luckily is most of the U.S. Uh, conjunctival redness or seeing redness in those membranes can be caused by eye disease or environmental irritants or other systemic diseases, but masking of anemia by these conditions is really uncommon and in the grazing season, it's just not that likely to, to happen. Other causes of anemia exist, but they tend to be uncommon or rare compared to barber pole worm in the grazing season. So really the chances of other uh, factors interfering with uh, the, the uh, FAMICA score directly relating to parasites, it's really not likely to happen. FAMICA is a very dependable system to use. Um, the card used to be printed in South Africa. It's now printed uh, by the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control. And the uh, card you're going to get looks a little different from the one that you'll see used in the demonstration video. We do have the uh, ACSRPC logo on the current card, you'll see. And also on the current card is the QR code for the video that you're going to watch. So if you need a refresher on our cover push pull pop uh, technique, all you need to do is scan that code and you can watch it again. And so that's the last of my uh, uh, lecture videos on the FAMICA system, and now you can watch our demonstration video on the procedure.